everybody and welcome to lucky number 13 of my Halloween series. So I am using stamps from the Sweet November. This is Midnight Mischief and I stamped it onto CC Designs Copic Quality 80 pound cardstock with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I started by coloring in the cat and as I was coloring I was like oh I kind of want to make it look like it's got a bit of texture to it, do something different. So I started dabbing the color on and I'm just using YR12 14 and 27 and then while I was doing this I was like oh you know what I'm gonna do um, is pull out uh, one of my little rags and add the colorless blender to it you know when you press that on top I've shown that in a video um, before it's kind of a well-known Copic technique and I wish I had thought of it sooner because normally when I do a technique like this I like to use the 110 pound cardstock because it's thicker and it lets the ink seep into the cardstock rather than out the edges. So you'll see in a minute it does kind of seep out the edges. But you know what? I just went with it this time. So yeah, I cut a piece of an old dishcloth and added the colorless blender to it. And then pressed it onto the cardstock. Literally, it takes, you barely need to press it for more than a second. And it gives it this really neat textured effect. And yeah, if the cardstock had been thicker, it would have just sunk deeper into, but because it was already fully saturated, it just kind of seeped out the edges a little bit. But I just went with it. So once that was done, I went on to color the cauldron and I used my go-to um, C5, C7, and C10 and really just kind of scribbling on the color for the first little bit just to get it laid down. And then once you get into the blending that, you, you can be a little more finicky and make sure you don't seep out the lines and all that kind of stuff. And then I thought I'd try another kind of new to me thing. This is something I never really practiced is making... Um, objects look transparent you know like when with balloons and that sort of thing it's just I've never really had the time and I've just never had the inclination to do it because I'm kind of lazy when it comes to coloring <laughs> but with this I was like oh you kind of have to just because you the, the way it's drawn the image is kind of drawn so that you can kind of see through the bottle so I was like oh so what I did was I just used lighter shades of gray I used um, a c3 and then a tiny bit of c5 to color the cauldron part of the bottles and then I'm just using really light colored Copic markers and coloring directly over it. Nothing fancy, um, hardly any blending, adding just a little bit of darker colors here and there, but nothing too fancy and yeah, not blending too much because I don't want to push the color in too deep, but then it kind of gives that transparent effect. I'm sure someone with more coloring skills could make it look absolutely fabulous, but I kind of did what I could with the time I had and yeah, I was kind of proud of myself. <laughs> but it kind of gave it a neat little look and then afterwards, once the card was completely done, I realized how cool it would have looked to cover the bottles with something like a clear glossy effects or glaze effects. That would have looked really cool but of course I thought of that way after the card was done and photographed and it takes, you know, you gotta leave it overnight to dry. So yeah, for future reference that would be a really cool thing. Um, so anyway, the colors I used were to go with the pattern paper. I'd shown this in my little paper smooches and peachycheat.com haul video recently. So yeah, this was the um, Little Yellow Bicycle Frightful 8x8 papers that I got from that sale. It came in like a bundle with matching brads and embellishments and stuff. So yeah, the pattern papers were from that pack and just an FYI, they're really thin. Like they're kind of like copier paper thickness which is okay for the most part it's just they're different but I used those and then the little brackets were part of that pack because it had a few sheets in the front of the pack of different die cuts and I'd actually tried to use a couple a different one there was a spider web die cut in there that I was going to try and use for this card but I kept tearing it when I was trying to pop out um the little pieces like I'm not big on like pre-done die cuts I like making my own with you know all the different steel rule dies and stuff I have but these ones were simple because they're just brackets so they're easy to pop out so I grabbed the two that came in the pack and I'm just going to adhere them to the card with my Tombow Mono Multi and oh and as always the main image was die cut with my my favorite things pierce circle stacks dies because of course I use those on everything <laughs> so I did that and I purposely had stamped the image so that I could overhang it off the card and trim it down and then yeah adhered the brackets and then I grabbed this little, this is the CC Designs Midnight's Magic Potion Cutters dies. They're made to go kind of with this stamp set. So I die cut those from three different um, Doodlebug cardstocks that I've got. I was using like the Brights pack for this card because the colors kind of went with the pattern paper. 
So it kept the I die cut the little um, potion bottles and then the toppers are also part of the die. So I just adhered the different colors just to kind of give it some um, dimension. And then I adhere those by my main image. And then the sentiment is from my spooky sentiments stamp set. And I just stamped it onto the cardstock. You're not going to get a perfectly stamped sentiment because it's textured cardstock. But with the VersaFine ink you can get it pretty darn close. And then yeah, again, I left a tiny bit of space because I wanted to use one of the little metal brads that came in this whole combo pack I got that matches the pattern paper. And then I'm going to adhere the card front to my card base and it's my standard A2 size card. So once I got that done, I'm going to go onto the inside of the card and I use the exact same layout as I used on the outside and just used up some of the pattern papers left over from cutting the inside. And then they had, there was two more brackets in the pattern paper pack, so I pulled those out and used those as well, because why not? And then the sentiment again is from my Spooky Sentiment set. So ink that up with the VersaFine, stamped it onto a strip of the green cardstock, and then adhered that into place. And that was it for um, the inside of the card. So keeping her pretty simple and yeah. So once I'm going to get that into place, I of course wanted to add something. I wasn't thinking glossy accents, because like I said, I thought about that later. But of course I had to add some sort of bling to the card front. So I was going to do stickles, but my Wink Estella pen was sitting right in front of me. And my tripod sits in front of the drawers that all my stickles are in, so this was just easier. <laughs> so I filled in kind of parts of the potion balls to look like that was the, po you know, the potion inside, rather than completely covering them. So I just used that for... Um, those and then I also made the potion on the colored image um, a little bit shimmery so I just kind of gave it a little extra something I'm really loving this pen seriously I can't stop using it so once I did that I decided I was gonna make an envelope to go with the card because these pattern papers are 8 by 8 which is the perfect size to make an A2 envelope um, I had a couple of people ask if I'll do a review on this I will this is actually the first time I've officially used it so yeah, when I get some time, I'll do an actual like separate video on it. But again, since these pattern papers were so thin and they're single sided, I just trimmed down one of them just a tiny little bit and then adhered them back to back so that the inside of the envelope will have the nice polka dot pattern paper. I thought that would be really cool. And then the outside is going to be one of the other patterns from the pack. So I had, yeah, eight by eight sheet of uh, pattern paper. And I measured it at three and five eight inches. I'm not sure if that's the measurement people told me, but that's the one that I seem to find works a little bit better than the one they tell you to use. So got all that, adhered it together, and then you've got this fun little coordinating envelope. So that's all there was to it for today. As always, there'll be a link below to my blog post with links to all the supplies used. Make sure you to subscribe, and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye.